not even five minutes goes by, we see him get up. And BK says too, like he sees him get up and freaking the homie just snags BK's glasses right off the back of his head. And we're like, I look, I'm like, what the hell? He stands up. The the guy that took the same glasses that took mine and BK's stands up now. And he's like, he looks at BK. Now he's like, now what the fuck are you going to yeah, do about he, it? He, huh? grabs his, he grabs his beard. Like he's going to like, he grabs his beard. And he looks at me. He's like, he goes, what are you going to do about it? He goes, you want to squabble this right now? You want to squabble this right now, dude? He goes, what the fuck are you going to do about it? While holding my glasses. And I'm, I'm looking at it. And I'm like, dude, yeah. I'm like, you have my glasses, bro. Give me back my glasses. Welcome back to another episode of Guys Being Dudes. This is going to be episode 43 for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in every single week. If you guys are new here, my name is RJ Bernal. Right here to my right-hand side is Mr. Luke Sula. You guys can find the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and of course, if you're a visual learner like myself, then YouTube. But sitting right here on my left-hand side is a familiar face. You know, he was actually the very first guest on the show, you know, 10 months ago. It's crazy that I'm 10 months through this, but we'll get to that right now. But guys, please welcome... Mr. Blake King, welcome to the show, my bro. Yo, 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 RJ Luke. Yes, yo, sir, another dude. another great day. I appreciate you guys having me on this podcast again. Mm-hmm. Um, just nothing but great things from seeing from you guys. So it's awesome seeing you guys get into this point. Appreciate uh, so that, many man. episodes in, and this isn't the finish. So yeah, you guys should be about a thousand episodes in when in the next few years. So I guess I should bro. see it. A long time away, but hey, that's the goal. A thousand yes, episodes at one mm-hmm. point, we'll be there. Should be up. You know, yes, we sir. actually just hit a milestone, bro. Yeah, no, we did. Now, big shout out to all the YouTube guys over there listening, watching, doing your guys' deal. Then we just got, uh, we just hit the 1,000, uh, 1,000 subscriber, 4,000 watch time hour mark. And that's for the, for the guys that don't know that. That's now allows us to get paid on YouTube. It's very, very it's cents very on, small. The, do- yeah, on the dollar, small, but, but it's a big milestone for us because, you mm-hmm. know, Kind of about like halfway through, about twenty episodes in, I started looking at that and I was like, "Yo, we got like thousand, thousand more hours, thousand more hours." Then like a couple more weeks would go, we go, "Hey, we got like five hundred more hours, five hundred more hours." Here we go, and then you know, and then we 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 finally hit it, four thousand watch time hours of straight podcasting, and that happened because of you guys. So honestly, I mean, I I couldn't be more happy. You know, that yeah, just shows awesome. that there's a little you know little steps like that. Pretty cool. Pretty so, dope, man. I Especially mean, awesome. for me, bro. Like, I've been doing YouTube for so many years now. And like, I've tried to hit that 4,000 hours yeah. mark in a year. And it's, it's, it's hard. It's hard, yeah, bro. Just, it's hard. That's a lot of hours. Think about it. There's 24 hours in a day. Okay. Think about that. 96 hours in what? Four? No. Yeah. Four days. So think about how many years that, it, or how many days that is. 4,000 watch time hours. And like, I've been trying for years on end, bro. And the, finally, the fact that Guys Being Dudes podcast was able to reach that milestone. Bro, we're going up right here, man. Pretty cool Sir, little monster. Yeah, this is a thousand Jay. followers, you know, not too long ago, and then now monetizing. So it's just little little steps mm-hmm. forward to big, you know, big progress in the future. Yes, so this is just the start, boys. Right, just the start. Bro. Exactly. It's only episode forty three, yep. man. Just the 52, start. 52, 52 weeks in a year. What are we like? Yes, Fifty three seven plus two nine weeks away from a year, man. So two months, we'll be there. Yeah, that's Dude, awesome. It's, it's real relieving. I can say now that baseball is back in action. I mean, it's been with like the college and all that stuff, but now mm-hmm. like every bit of baseball. I mean, we got high school baseball, we got college baseball, we got freaking MLBs actually back from the lockout. Everything's back. You know, mm-hmm. what I mean, we actually got the baseball aspect and atmosphere here. So I'm excited for sure. Like 100%. this last weekend, bro. Like, I mean, I was pounding, pounding baseball. Friday was freaking high school baseball. Saturday we went mm-hmm. to the Grizzly game. We got a crazy story about that Sunday with baseball too as well. Mm-hmm. I mean, like it was just you know everywhere is all around. But that's what, that's what it's all about. Just watching baseball because I'm mm-hmm. we're big baseball guys. Baseball here. guys, big man. baseball guys. So I think about. it has a lot to help with the last couple of years of your life. You know, just watch some baseball, man. Yeah, I've heard it from a bunch of other podcasts or like a bunch of like um, segments like on ESPN or whatnot on TV. They're just talking about how you know this year of sports is going to be a very big year of sports for every it doesn't matter what sport it is. Every sport's going to have a big year this year. For sure. And you know, it, it kind of seems out. like every year's there each organization's trying to one up the other because like you know we see the NFL big move. They like to stay in the headlines but then MLB sneaks in with their big headlines and something crazy happening. Mm-hmm. NBA you know now we got the playoffs going on so there's a lot happening you know so, yeah. but it's cool like to, there's always competitiveness going around you know mm-hmm. working to be the best you know sport people want to watch and a- atmosphere and all that stuff like that's that. That's what I'm trying Which to do great. too. Yeah that's what I'm yeah. trying to be too just trying to make it to that next level as, right. a, as a junior college baseball player right now just Wanting to get to that next level, wanting to play, mm-hmm. keep playing until, you know, 
Yeah. So he gives dude. up. So keep competing. Keep yeah, stay consistent. That's the one thing too. Is key. We had a little issue going back and we went to the Grizzly game this past Saturday. And I don't know, you know, people who follow our Twitter and stuff, I put something out and I didn't want to be like a Karen and all that, but I felt like just the fact that, you know, the podcast atmosphere, we like to talk about Fresno and all that stuff. And I feel like, you know, they're Fresno Grizzlies themselves are pushing it real hard to get people out there and get the fan base going and all that stuff like that. And the only reason why I tweeted was because I just felt like, hey, if you guys want that scenario, we can't be having the scenarios that we just had on, you know, Saturday. So let me let me get into this. So Friday, about Friday night ish time. We're still going, right? Yeah, we're still going. Oh, yeah. So about Friday night time happens. I call it BK. We're hanging out. I'm like, yo, let's go to a Grizzly game because we were going to go the Friday night, but we just happened not to go. So I'm like, let's go Saturday. And he's like, all right, bet. Yeah, because he had a game and all that stuff. So we go after his game. I'm getting ready, waiting for him. He calls me. He's like, yo. He's like, guess what, bro? He's like, my my dad just called me and said I, he's got two tickets and they're sweet tickets and free parking. He goes, we got to go pull up to my aunt's though. She lives in Sanger. I'm like, bro, it's free parking and free tickets. Let's Man, we go. Could, yeah. We can we like, take, take down that. I'm like, bro, I don't care. I'm like, come on now. The, the price I would pay, you know, for the ticket and parking is going to be as much, you know, whatever. Yeah. is le- more than whatever. So I was like, hell yeah. So we go. We, we drive out to Sanger, get the tickets. Everything's cool. She's telling us the whole ordeal. She got us sweet tickets. And we're like, oh, hell yeah. It's mm-hmm. sweet tickets, food, everything. So boom, we pull up. We get to the game. We're all excited. We're we're amped, man. It's Fresno Grizzly baseball. You know, last time I was there to enjoy a good baseball game was like probably when the the, the Giants were still affiliated yeah. with them, like when it was, mm-hmm. you know, getting crowd. We watch the game. We go up to the suite. Bunch of food. I mean, hot dogs, burgers. There's corn on Just the Just the best baseball American mac and food cheese, you can think of that's beans, in there. Yeah. Cookies, popcorn. I mean, there's everything. So we help ourselves, bro. Get a nice plate, bro. You know, get nice and full. Yeah, bro. About, you know, two, three innings go by. Like let's go, let's go check out the park a little bit, you know. They made some renovation stuff, so we, we're walking around doing our thing, and I'm like, we have to get Dippin' Dots, right? That's we have must. to. The last four games, you're I've like oh for two, to. I think. Yeah, right now, like like that's what I'm saying. Dots. I've tried to get I Dippin' Dots. I haven't had Dippin' Dots in about like three years. Yeah, it's been, it's so, been long, so long, and I'm like, yo, I need my Dippin' Dots. Dippin' Dots, we need a sponsorship over here. I, I love you guys. All right, but back to the story. We get, I'm like, yeah, we got to go get some dipping dots. So we're going, we're trying to find a dipping dots and the lines long. We're like, all right, let's of go. Of course, let's, bro. Yeah. There's never a time. There's never a dull moment when you pull up to a dipping dots, little stand Anywhere, right it's there. It's long, bro. right? It's long. So I'm like, all right, let's go check out the store. Well, I was still finishing my, uh, my crown and Coke. You know, I was, I was sipping a little bit, finishing my crown and Coke and, uh, walk in. Well, we can't walk in with beverages. So I'm like, all right, let's go finish walking around the stadium, walk around the stadium, do our thing, go into the store after the time goes by get ourselves a nice hat, you know, do the whole ordeal, get some dipping dots. And like, we're, we're like, all right, let's go sit down and watch the rest of the game. About sixth inning, seventh inning, we go down. We're right on the Stockton port side, right down on home plate, you know, sitting about two, three rows up, enjoying some good baseball, eating our dipping dots. Life's good. The mm-hmm. Grizzlies are winning. Everything's hey, great. And I was chirping. I was like, yeah. come on, Skipper, get him. And then the the one of the bullpen guys, I was throwing a bullpen, <laughs> uh, threw the ball all the way down. Like no. where the home plate is. I, oh. I said, hey, figure it out down there. Come on. Yeah. And, and, the, and, like, and the even, coaches started laughing. Yeah, even they like, were laughing the too. Like, come on now. Like, 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 it was like, just like, it was like baseball chirp. Nothing bad. We're just, like I said, enjoying a great baseball day. You know, they're, they're winning. It's good. Mm-hmm. And so there was a scenario where it was like bases were loaded or something like that because the guy that BK was chirping at, that the pitcher that threw it to, you know, from the bullpen over to the the game in in play, he ended up coming into into the game. Well, he walked three guys straight, bases oh, loaded. Shit. So now you know it's it going well, that on. That guy, that guy had no <laughs> yeah, room he, to he be on that mound. <laughs> he couldn't throw one strike. Poor to save guy, his life. but poor guy, but he. So <laughs> you I'm guys like, are foul, bro. Yeah, oh, but man. hey, I mean. You're you're in a single A base baseball team. You're a pro now. Like you should be able to throw a strike. At least pump a strike. Or pump one a strike. strike. He one strike. Even. He couldn't even throw a strike, my dude. Yeah, he like, walked, it, walked, like dude, walked. it was four balls, four balls, four balls, and twelve pitches. I, I kid you not. Yeah, RJ, was, he literally could not throw a strike, dude. Might have been bad. one foul ball. <laughs> like other it was that, horrible. It was, yeah, it was just straight. Walking. And then Skipper, Skipper went out there. We're like, yeah, Skip, come on, Skip, get him out, Skip. <laughs> and boom, I mean, it was awesome. And awesome. like, yeah, taking so him out of the game was yeah, awesome. Take him out. Him really, 
I'm like, three nine, you know, I was like, you don't deserve it. You don't deserve it here. It's like next outing, next outing. But hey, you know, just chirping. It was fun, fun time. Yeah, it sounds bo- like a great time. It was because yeah. the boy warming for the Grizzlies, he just hit a tank earlier, and it's pretty cool. His name's Warming. Warming, yeah. yeah. We were like, so, hey, warming. so this is why I hopped on live because we had yeah. we had bases loaded and warming was coming up. I'm like, oh, he hit a tank. He's gonna do something again for sure. So I hop on live. And I'm on live for a good amount of time. And, uh, you know, I'm doing everything, but I kept, I keep hearing something from the group of guys that are behind us. I keep hearing them like, they're like repping. They're like, keep saying something like, well, like blah, 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 like some area code. And I'm like, I thought they were just talking, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. And then I'm on live and then like the batters come warming ends up walking. I think again, the pitcher walks him. So the guy come, next batter comes up. All of a sudden I feel someone like grab some off the back of my head. So I thought it was like a homie that maybe saw that, you know, Luke or whatever, you know, giving myself some props, GBD, you know, maybe they were like, Hey, I want to go say what's up. You know, it wasn't that ordeal. It was, it was someone wanted to cause a fight. He takes my glass. I turn around. I'm like, yo. And he goes, what are you going to do about it? Huh? I'm like, bro, just give me back my glasses. And when I said that, I realized I was like, okay, yeah, he's drunk. I can tell, you know, all that stuff, but I didn't cause anything. Didn't ever said anything, all that. I figured he might've just been mad. I was on live, you know? So I was just like, yo. Just give me back my glasses, bro. Yeah, we were, and, and me and Luke, yeah, me and Luke started to chime in, but we were just like, what just happened? Like, yeah. We were just like, what, what on earth just happened? Like, yeah. Well, yeah. So I'm like, yo, give me back my glasses, bro. And he's like, and his homie's trying to get him back. And there's a girl with him and they're like, no, just give him back his glasses, bro. Like, why? Stop doing that. Stop doing that. And he's like, no, like, what are you going to do about it, bro? And I'm like, yo, just give me my glasses back. And so the guy, the, his friend grabs him, gives him back to, gives him back to me. And I turn around. And I'm just like, like, whatever. Like, uh-huh. okay. Like maybe he's just drunk, whatever. And, like, the whole time, though, like, I felt hella uncomfortable after that happened. You know, I'm like, I feel like this dude's just going to, like, backhand me or some shit now. Like, because uh-huh. I, I saw the way he looked. Like, I turned around and I looked at him, you know, and I'm like, what are you doing, bro? And, like, I could just tell he's all drunk, you know, just whatever. I'm like, you know. Were there, were there a lot of people around? Like, yeah, there, he- Well, not around us. It was literally. So, we're, I mean, we're two, three rows from, from the field. And then there's nobody. And then there was one lady that was a concession stand worker that that group of guys that was with him. There was one of their homies was like hitting on her the whole time that, you know, she was done working. He was like hitting on her and they're like laughing and stuff like that. So we thought there was like, that's what they were doing, you know, just messing with him. But he like wanted to cause an issue. Like, I don't know if that guy got mad that his homie was hitting on this girl and Mm -hmm. like was just trying to be a big dog or what the case was. But literally, like, as soon as he takes my glasses and like gives them back, like I could just tell like, all right, something's off here now. So, you know, anyways, I thought that that was the end of it. And like I said, I was a little uncomfortable. I honestly thought like, you know, just the homie was just going to backhand me if I said some dumb shit or something. So I'm just sitting there, you know, like, all right, you know, whatever. I'm like talking to him. I'm like, what the fuck just happened? You know, he's like, dude, I don't know. And then like not even five minutes goes by. We see him get up. And BK says too, like he sees him get up and freaking the homie just snags BK's glasses right off the back of his head. And we're like, I look, I'm like, what the hell? He stands up. The the guy that took the same glasses that took mine and BK's stands up now. And he's like, he looks at BK now. He's like, now what the fuck are you going to yeah, do about he, it? He, huh? grabs his, he grabs his beard. Like he's going to like, he grabs his beard and he looks at me. He's like, he goes, what are you going to do about it? He goes, you want to squabble this right now? You want to squabble this right now, dude? He goes, what the fuck are you going to do about it? While holding my glasses and I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm like, dude. I'm like, you have my glasses, bro. Give me back my glasses. Yeah. And we're yelling yeah. at him. We're, we're like, yo, just give him back. We're like, bro, just give him back my glasses, dude. And he was just like, he was like, bro, let's go squabble it. Let's go. Get up. Let's go. Let's go squabble this. And where's this dude, like security? Dude, no, no, no security. No, dude. He was yelling, bro. Like you can hear him from the other side of the stadium. You think the players could have heard him? Oh, easily. Well, we were, we were right, right we were there right by, the dugout. by the dugout. Like yeah. we're literally right. We were not even fit. Like from where I am to BK was how far we were to the skipper. Literally. Like that's oh, why when yeah. he was chirping at the yeah. at the players, the, they were like, like the coaches were laughing at a few times because like they like, they they either knew we were baseball guys or whatever because just by the style of chirping, you know, because they were just laughing because it wasn't bad stuff. But yeah, like it was close enough. So like you could hear the scenario, but there was two other white guys that were going right there. And this guy comes over. They were like, he's like, you better shut the fuck up, bro. Like, what are you going to do about it? Huh? We're like, yo, just give it back the fucking glasses, bro. Well, then the guy that was hitting on that girl comes in play and he's trying to be all hard as fuck, you know, because he's got that girl that he's trying to impress and all that. So he now he stands up and he's behind us. But so that's what I'm saying. Like there were six of them. But now you got now they were all just, dis, you know, distributed. So it was the one homie that took our glasses and his friend. Then you had the the that were in front of us. Then you had the homie that was hitting on the girl was behind us. And then you had two of his other homies on the side of us. It's like we were kind of like we were surrounded. Like on on no 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 like bitch shit. We were surrounded. You know what I mean? Like you guys thought it was over. You guys uh, thought about not it. even that. It was just it was like not even over. And so we were like, is this a scenario to do something or not? 
And we're just standing there like, what the fuck, you know, and all this commotion's going on. We're trying to get our fucking glasses back. And finally, by then, we, I look at BK and I'm like, yo, like, let's get these fucking glasses. And right when we look back up, the homie's like dipping out to like go upstairs. That's so fun. With my glasses in, with his, in glasses. his hands. And then we, we, I look at Luke, I'm like, bro, let's go. We got to go. So we get, we get our, we grab our stuff, we go up the stairs. Next thing you know, Luke is like, oh, he's gone. Like he went off, he went out. Saw him run. Like, yeah, run he off. literally ran out. Like, right when we got to the top of the stairs, he ran out and saw him, like, well, fuck, bro. So I try to go over to get security and police and all that. And we're trying to talk to them. And they're just looking at us, like, okay, like, yeah. And I'm like, That's- all right, whatever. So I'm like, let's go. So we try to go see if we could find them. And then we didn't find him, but their friends were still there. It was still like two or three friends were still there. And they like come up to us and they're like, yo, we're sorry. Like, he, he's just drunk, you know, all that stuff. It, it doesn't usually happen like that, but. You know, I'm sorry, man. Like, blah, 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 blah. And we're like, well, well, where is he? And like, he's obviously your friend. He's like, well, he already dipped with his other homie, all this stuff. Like, he dipped out and all that. Like, whenever he does this shit. And we're like, bro, there's no excuse for this shit. You just you that- didn't tell him to, like, call him back? Well, <laughs> see, the, I, it was just so much. That was where we kind of fucked up, but didn't at the same time. Because, like, bro, there's so much. Like, in the heat of the moment, like, it doesn't sound it like it was that crazy. There's so much going on. And there was, like, people coming up to ask us, like, you know, did you guys get your glasses back? Like, everything. That we're like, it just didn't hit us to ask that one friend. Cause he like, honestly, he showed up. He was like, yo, I'm sorry, blah, blah, blah. He asked for BK and then he just turned around and like dipped. Like it was like two minute talk, like if that. So it was just kind of like so much going on and we just didn't be like, well, give us a number, like all that stuff like that. And we were just like, what the fuck's happening? You know, it no. was yeah, fucked, nothing, bro. Nothing, bro. It was straight it was up just a shit situation. Sh- just no, I just, I give. Fred, the Fresno Grizzlies, no props to absolutely no security, no no yeah, the security. cops. There's no like nothing was around. But like, yeah, I mean, I get it. You got some. I mean, they're old. They're old people that have jobs that are trying to work usher. You're making some money, yeah, but it's like they're not doing their job right. Mm-hmm. It's like or, come or on. to even help keep or even people help safe, like you know trying I mean? to keep like, people safe. It's like we, there was more fans trying to help out, you know, help us out than there were the security, you know. And then when we act like the actual security that were right there. They were they were just older ladies and they couldn't do anything. Yeah, they couldn't about, do anything yeah. about it. So yeah, and then we're, we're while all men. We, yeah, while we were talking to the people, all seven security were right there just watching, just watching, literally. literally. And just, like I look at them, and again, no dweebs to them, but I mean, no like harm to them. But they all they're just like they're just standing there looking like dweebs. dweebs. Like, they're they no, just they just, just literally, so they literally just stood there looking like dumbasses. Like, dude, you you don't know what you're doing, right? Just go back. They home. were there collecting a check at the end of the yeah, day. Collect, yeah, literally. And like, it's cool that like, again, that scenario is a one in a million chance that something happens like that. And the end of the day, it was just a shitty person looking to start something. Like that's the, that's all it was. It was someone that just wanted to start some, had no other issue. And like I said, it was just a little alcohol in there and Hey, things go sideways. So at the end of the day, it's like not something that I'm going to sit and dread on every single day, yeah. but it's the fact that like, yo, if you guys are going to press, people to go out there that hard and you guys want people a fan base and you want all that you got to want people to feel safe you got to want you know everybody to feel like it's going to be okay you want to feel like if something happens knowing that alcohol is there that you know security or whoever's gonna you know help you guys out in this in a case or maybe and that wasn't the case at all man i mean we we're left high and dry and you know yep. down 350 dollars on some nice pair of glasses yeah, you know for sure. and at the end of the day yeah they're glasses you know and but there was no reason for that scenario to even have, have occurred you mm-hmm. know and and it was crazy too because like the homie like he was just he just wanted to start an issue like that's at the end of the day that's really all it was like it was, you can't like have you done anything after that prior like to try to get um, glasses like a new pair go, from I them mean, or something I'll try like to that get, uh, try to go to Chick Chansey the next uh, that Monday and uh, think I don't know my my pops works out out there in downtown so have you gone though? yeah we yeah we gone and uh, so they haven't they said the uh, person that we needed to talk to wasn't there. So yeah. it was so and they said it happened. Come, they weren't in business. Yeah, they hours. weren't in business hours. So we had to basically come back Monday, tomorrow, yeah. basically yeah, the next day. Oh, okay. So damn. Yeah, hopefully, so yeah, hopefully it comes back. Hopefully it gets something. But yeah, at least right, yeah. at least right. just make it right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Rest in peace, well, my they're, glasses. Yeah, man. they're giving free Oakleys. Maybe you know, like you just get a pair of Oakleys or something. Give them the hookup. Yeah. Right. Like, again, there's, there was just no reason for no that. reason. Yeah, but at the end of the day, it's like I said when we were leaving. Like I was like, I guarantee that kid probably did nothing with those glasses. He either probably just chucked them out the window just because he or was like fucking just stomped on. Yeah, because he had no like he he wasn't a baseball guy. Like he was just there with some buddies, and we heard him talking about their. We heard their conversations. That's how close we were. They're like, yeah, we don't even like baseball. We just want they just wanted to come out to a game and they were you know fresno guys or whatever just with a group of friends so they weren't baseball people you know so what was he going to do with some you know baseball oakley's like you know yeah. it doesn't want it that just 
hearing that story just doesn't even want to make me go to a game right like that's right. it's the and like thing. having to deal with the people literally so yeah. and that's the thing too is like and i even like i didn't realize of it getting into the game but like dude we had no security check nothing i mean nothing somebody are you serious no someone security. just walked in strapped. Walked straight in yep. the only thing they check are people with purses yep. and it's like are you fucking serious I mean, you could just go in there strapped and there's no yeah. like security wand no 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 walk through no nothing. no scanner nothing yeah. And Holy I mean, I don't know shit. if it's because it's the single A and there's only certain levels of security they got, but they got to understand it's downtown Fresno. I mean, that, you yeah, know, downtown get, Fresno is something else. It can get oh crazy my down there, you goodness. know? Low key, is... no cameras either, like in downtown. Any, like, any downtown, like, there's any, like, basically no cameras. I like, can see. Bro, that's they are they're only looking for yeah, certain looking things. looking for certain stuff, things. Yeah. And just, I mean, crazy, but hey, I mean, happy. It happened. It, yeah. yeah, it's done and over. I'm shot. I'm not going to say I'm not going to go to another game. Like, again, that's a one in a million chance that that thing, that scenario happens. But maybe it is, don't wear sunglasses. Next yeah, time. I'm not bringing anything yeah, nice no, to sure, remember I guess, again. But it, I mean, it was sunny. I mean, I don't want to have my eyes, you know, you just got to suffer first. through it though next time. Yeah, then. No, for Put sure. it in my pocket next time. It's just sad. Did that, you wear that chain? I did, but it was in my shirt. Yeah. I mean, it's just sad that we had to deal with that. You know what I mean? Hundred percent. Shouldn't have bro. to. We should be able yeah, to go to a, a game situation. But yeah, hey, hey, we're good though. Hey, we're gonna get some new glasses. So we're gonna be all right. Yes, all right, we're gonna be all right. We're, there. we're all right. Life, life yes, does sir. not end. Life does not end, boys. So right there, Dude, man. But hey, the first week MLBs, it's gone. It's out it's of the awesome. way. Opening day happened. All we that. Want some money? It's Rocktober, dude. I mean, the Colorado Rockies. I'm pumped, dude. The Colorado Rockies took two of three from the Dodgers, man. It's the best I mean, thing. I, I'm, a, I'm a Dodger fan. And yeah, hell yeah, baby. I give okay. I'm gonna give credit to the Rockies because they came out opening. They came out opening week and firing out. And, oh, they were fired. And as a Dodger fan, and what our lineup is right now, there should be no need for that Dodgers team to be losing like at all. Like especially, I mean, it doesn't matter what the rotation. If it's good, not good, that team should be putting up 15 hits, 20 hits a game. With at least eight to ten runs, like yeah. it just it, it mind blows me that they can't do it. But hey, I mean it's still early. Three games in, Rockies win the series. It's all good. Um, but I'm just I'm happy baseball is back. Yeah. You know it's back. Yeah. So. The, the reason I say that is because Chris Bryant he he said going there like that's that's the reason why he wanted to go there. Man, it's going to be Rocktober. They're going to go to the playoffs. They're going to do all this stuff. And you know they took the series from a good team, so it was it was it was funny, and I'm excited because I'm a Giants fan. So you know that's always great to see the the Dodgers get defeated, and Giants came. You guys out lost like, to the Marlins, though. Hang we on, but they took, they took the series. We, so lost, we took the series. series. We lost, lost one game, and we only lost by a run. But hey, a loss is a loss. But at the end of the day, though, what I will say is, yeah, we shouldn't have even lost a game. We should have blown the freaking Marlins out. But it's the beginning of the season, bro. It's the beginning of the season. Hey, speaking of the Marlins, I'm 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 saying Jazz Chiz in the next three to five years MVP. You think so? I'm thinking. I'm thinking so. Yeah. Jazz Chisholm's the next up, man. Uh, he's he's legit. I like that dude. Yeah. I mean, at the Marlins, like I don't know if he could. I, yeah. Uh, yeah, I just he's got he's got to impress. Yeah, you Marlins, never know. But, you got to you got to impress though. At the same time, you got to put up numbers. You got to put up stats. All right. this stuff. And what 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 stands out about him the most? Do you? Like, I just think I think personally from Jazz Chisholm, and he's a newer guy in the MLB and. Something that really has changed in baseball and older baseball, really like new new baseball. Now it's the swagger. It's the want to look good, look play good, you know. And but jazz, you also have to play. You got to play that. good. Then, but that Jazz Chisholm has that. Like he has that swaggerness. He just has that that mentality of you know just let me let me look good and I'll play good, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's what I like about him. He's just he's just so swaggy and. He has that mentality and on, on him just man, it just I'm gonna go out there and just win. And 100%. I love that's why I love Jazz Chisholm. And that's cool. hopefully I mean, hopefully I get to see in the next five mm -hmm. years an MVP on him and that'd be awesome. You know, I'm hopefully I'm calling it right here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there Literally. you go. You heard it right here on GBD. Heard it right here on GBD. You just mentioned, you know, new school, it's more swaggy, old school is more, you know, blue collared baseball. How would older players do with the newer players nowadays? Do you that's feel a, like the old timers could, uh, could feel, compete I mean, with these just, pitchers? You just gotta, you just gotta realize that in the Babe Ruth time, the Lou Gehrig's time, like that, that generation was all about just power. I feel like it was just all about home runs, home runs, home runs, home runs. Like now, you you see now, like this generation, you see cats throwing ninety five at the age of sixteen. Yeah, you're like, bro, what? You're like, uh, but at the same time. I want to see those old hitters going to go, going against a 90, 100 mile an hour fastball. So you like, you think so? Back in the day, 
these pitchers weren't throwing 100 miles an hour. Can we all no, there, agree upon there's that? Some, there's some, there's some, like, Stats saying that some like back in that day, pitchers were throwing at least eighty five to like ninety three. Okay, yeah. So I honestly, personally, I don't think a Babe Ruth could could hit a guy like who's who's a, like who, Nolan Ryan. I'm gonna say Nolan Ryan. Nolan Ryan's one of the best pitchers to ever come out. He throws one hundred three, one hundred four miles an hour. Okay, and he has a curveball. He has a slider. He has a changeup. All right, and he can all throw it for strikes. So you think he could carve against I just the, think the that, hitters I nowadays? Think that, I think if you put Babe, Babe Ruth, one of the greatest hitters of all time, Shohei Otani, possibly could be one of the greatest hitters of all time coming off a 46 home run season. Um, you put him up there against a pitcher that's a Nolan Ryan type that's throwing 102. You're comparing with, two old guys. Like that, you're comparing I, Babe Ruth and Nolan Ryan that's, right but now. That's what I'm saying. But Nolan Ryan. I'm saying if Nolan Ryan was right there on the mound right now, could Co- Cody Bellinger take him yard? Yes. I, I think out of 10 chances, yes. Okay. What do you ten think, man? 10 at-bats, yes. I mean, my thing is my thing is the way the game's changed, obviously, with technology. The, the baseballs were different back then. The the swings, the technology, the style, the way everything has changed. So would we know? We don't know. Because you put a player in – you put the player, the great greatest players, you put Mike Trout, Shohei, you put all the – Fernando Tatis, you put all those guys in that era. How do they do? You know, it's, I don't know. It's something that I don't think we know. Like, I don't yeah, think no, so. So you would think that the new school players would be able to beat the old school because we have more of that. I think that m- upper hand more, we of have it, more, more of it, too, is technology. I think more of it, a lot, a lot of it, too, is technology because now you got guys exit velo, launch angle. A lot of these guys in the older, like they just they they just swung. They got like they had, they had no swing. They just swung mm-hmm. like. Like baseball, it is still like it's still the v- very similar. The game is still very similar. Oh, easily, Obviously, yeah. it's you know you got the you know, nine players, all the bases, all that stuff. You still got to pitch to the batter. The batter still got to hit the ball. All the you know all the baseball shenanigans. But at the end of the day, the game has truly changed so much that like it's baseball. Then you know what the Nolan Ryan's and and you know Babe Ruth, what they were playing baseball is not the same baseball mm-hmm. as yep. as today. It's and just, I think some of the new baseball now needs the old baseball, like hard ass, like yeah. chewing them out. Because nowadays it's like you're like it's like you do something wrong. It's like get it next time, buddy. You know, it's like no, it's like come on, like get your ass up and make that play, you know, or something. It's like a you need that hard ass to these new guys, you know, because mm-hmm. some of these guys like now this generation soft. It's like I can just totally tell, and I mean. Growing up, I just had a hard ass coach on me every single day. Like it just, I had someone, someone telling me, you know, just do this isn't right. This isn't right. And I just had to do something perfect. That's why these pro guys, these newer guys, it's more, they're trying to show like the, like the swaggerness, like I said, and these older guys are just like the, the made of baseball. Like they were just trying to make the made of baseball, but the newer mm-hmm. game is just so much different now. In my opinion, it just, yeah, crazy. the guys, the guys that stand out the most to me, and this is at all levels, the guys that stand out the most to me are typically the ones that were harped on their entire young career, man. Like the ones that, that had coaches telling them, Hey, this is what we have to do. This is what you got to do. Hey, this, that, no, that was, you made an error. Let's go. Let's go to the field. Let's make the adjustment. Let's, let's figure it out yeah. next time. Those guys stand out the most. Yeah, for sure. Saying. And those are the guys that make it to the next level, bro. Those are the guys that yeah. make it to the next level. But personally, I do believe the new school players, man, could could out out compete yeah. old school players. Yeah, that's, 100%. What I, yeah, that's what I think too. For 100%, sure, 100%. bro. We got guys throwing gas now, bro. Yeah. Gas, dude. And Hunter Green, bro. Hunter Green was drafted 28, 2017 draft or something like that. Twenty eighteen or twenty seventeen. And I got to watch Hunter Green at Area Codes over there in Long Beach. Um, that was amazing. I mean, he was throwing 101 in high school, bro. That's crazy. High school yeah. baseball, he was throwing 101. Absolutely carving, dude. And his, I, I'll never forget it, bro. And uh, Joe Adele for the Angels. He was at the same Area Code. He won the home run derby over there. It, Dude, he was launching baseballs. It was sick, And it's just bro. crazy to see these guys now, like, bro. they're up there. They're in the bigs now. You're seeing them on TV. They got Hunter Green, bro. They, they said that... Because when they when he was on like because you guys remember back in the day when he got drafted too he was on Sports Illustrated oh yeah and they were they were when that came out I remember that they were comparing that to the LeBron time because when LeBron he got put on Sports Illustrated too like fifteen twenty years ago when he was still in Akron High School and they uh, they had him as like the next best thing and then now look you know look who LeBron is now he's mm-hmm. one of the biggest NBA stars and so they're saying you know 
Hunter Green, he could be the next big star. And, and MLB is, you know, that this is somebody that the MLB needs. Someone like Hunter Green, a consistent, I mean, dude, the, his last outing, he threw five innings and over, there was over 20 pitches. He threw over a hundred miles an hour. So he's, con, not, he's not just hitting, you know, he's not like throwing a hundred mile an hour pitch. He's consistently throwing a hundred yeah. miles an hour. You know what I mean? And so just imagine seeing that consistently a hundred miles an hour and seeing a 83 mile an hour breaking ball. And then that's the other thing going back to is before, like, cause people ask, well, he was a second round pick or whatever for, or it's not second round, second pick. Why, you know, why isn't he just hitting the major leagues now? Well, it was because back then he only had a fastball and like now he has his slider and he's got his change up. His last outing showed, bro. He was carving dudes because when you got a hundred mile an hour fastball, like boom, bust him in, and then you hit him with an outside, mile, you know, eighty five mile an hour slider. It's just a whole to, different. You don't know what pitch to do. Yeah, match. you don't know I, what to I, do. I actually it. believe that he got he had Tommy John though right after. Yeah, in twenty nineteen. Yeah, 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 set him did. back. Yeah, but well, no, he got drafted, went to his thing, got injured because I mean, it's just simple because he's just yeah flinging it, flinging it, and then you know. But he would have been in the big leagues earlier if if he never got Tommy John for sure. I feel like, but I mean, mm. still has they to give time. Yeah, I feel like you still need time to. Yeah, that was that's why that, that was my get, point saying why he took his. It wasn't the Tommy John. It was they already said that you're gonna get. They wanted him to prove that he could actually not just throw his fastball because mm-hmm. you got to have other pitchers. Because eventually, these MLB guys, you know, they're already seeing consistently 98 miles an hour. So three more miles an hour for a fastball. That's just get your foot down a tad, tad more. Yeah, one point seconds. You know, sooner. And as a hitter, that's really, really hard. And right. coming from me too, I mean, I'm I play first, third, I'm a hitter. Um, it just it is hard mm-hmm. seeing I mean, even right now, seeing a 93 mile hour foul ball, but then you see a 75 mile hour breaking ball, mm-hmm. and just like you, you're just like what you just gotta. It's just so hard, man. That's true. So if he can, if he can stay throwing 100 throughout the entire game. That would be I've no one's ever done that before. It's usually the closers, like an Aaron Hicks out of the bullpen that just comes and throws 103 for an inning and is done. You know, but when you got a starting pitcher who is firmly throwing a hundred every single time, that's 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 lethal, bro. That's a lethal arm in your arsenal. Mm-hmm, for that's sure. Crazy, bro. My Dodgers are taking it this year. I'm no, sorry bro, to say I'm it. I'm sorry to hear that. But the, I'm sorry. 2022. I'm, I'm sorry Dodgers that you will say take that. It. I'm sorry. The thing with the Dodgers is that they don't make adjustments. Absolutely. They dude, they will go a whole uh, they'll go a whole month of just going over and they will not make a single adjustment. And tell me, you're getting paid millions of dollars. And you can't even just make a simple adjustment overnight and just be like, look at film. They got all the no, technology. I mean, they got yeah. all the angles and I everything. S- they I could go, it. okay, I need to get my foot down. Okay, let me go work on it. And eventually over a week of working on something, they'll get there. But yeah. they, they don't – it looks like there's just – they don't care. They don't want to change anything. They just think that, okay, you know what? I'm going to connect here. Let's get some mojo going. Like Instead of like thinking, okay, I have to actually work towards something you know just because you get to the pros doesn't mean that your your work i i personally i'm not there i don't know anything i'm just you know yeah. i'm just what what's it called i'm just you know from an outsider's perspective this is my perspective on it i just don't see them making the adjustments as much as they I, need no, to be I, doing. i'd get it but i mean there's certain guys on that team that that won't make the adjustment like cody bellinger like he's bro that he, is yeah, a he prime no example of going over yeah. for a yeah, hundred i'm saying like i mean as a pro guy you got you got to fix up some swings or some stuff in your swing and uh i mean that just for everyone i mean as a, I, even as a golf player like mm-hmm. you got to golf guys swing fix up their swings almost every freaking day like mm-hmm. just coming from tiger woods watching video like he says he's like, he tried to like you know figure out something that's perfect in his swing every mm-hmm. time every time he's swinging so I feel like that that is true sometimes for the Dodgers and they don't make that adjustment. But I just feel like the the Dodgers with that payroll in their hand, like, oh, I'm gonna make this much money, you know, like I don't like I don't gotta produce that much. But at it's the like, same time, you're in LA, you're in that big setting with sixty thousand people watching you, including an extra million more watching you on TV. Just before, I mean, pretty much before we establish who's going to be good, it's too early, right? We yeah, just kinda, yeah, it's still early. We I mean, just got three games in. Yeah, you got to give it a month at least. It's the same thing with college baseball. Like it's the same way. You just got to give it a solid month because right now, a lot of pitchers are ahead. Some hitters are ahead. You know, got Nolan who Nolan Arenado who's he's ahead right now in the game, but. Then the pitchers are going to catch up, and then he's going to, you know, go two for four instead of four for four. Yeah. He's going to go one for three. You know, mm-hmm. he's going to have just those regular games. So I think it's just a matter of, you know, give it give it a month. We'll start seeing the teams bought because at the end of the day, you got a great team like the Dodgers. 
and they're not just gonna they're not gonna go one and two. I mean, it's the first it was the first yeah, three they're, games. They're I'm not, not gonna go. Not gonna. They're, they're not gonna be an under five hundred team this year. Yeah, no shot. All. They will. No and shot. if they are, then yeah, there is that was some serious chemistry issues. One hundred percent. That's the only thing you could say about that team because when you got all those guys, now it might. I mean, you've seen it happen in L.A. before. Talking with like the Lakers, you know, you got the Vogel three, just got fired. Yeah, now. but you know, you had three of the best best nba guys on your team you know and you couldn't, yeah, the best couldn't even starting make it, five in the whole nba best, almost yeah. almost you could you could argue that is arguable but you could say you know they had the best starting five and they didn't even make it to the playoffs you know yeah. and, and a lot but a lot of it has to go and once you start paying a lot of those guys that money ego and all that stuff yep. comes, becomes that's, a thing that's the one thing instead ego. of just focusing mm-hmm. on the one goal winning and playing the baseball or, or game whatever you are mm-hmm. i feel bad for their for the people they got in the farm system because like think about it. if you're a triple a player bro you've been grinding your whole life for for getting to the big leagues and you have hang on you got the 40 man roster that's above you right and you're just waiting for the call but you know that call's not coming because you got millions and millions of dollars just taking up roster spots up there and you know what they're not gonna move no one it's so hard it's luck bro going from triple a to the majors is absolutely luck someone has to get hurt someone has there has to be an opening because they're not gonna bring someone up if it nothing needs to change yeah. if 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 there's not an opening, they're not going to do anything. Yeah. And that's what it's and, plain and simple. But that's dude. that's the thing with and the, with the Dodgers, yeah. their payroll, bro. Yeah, there's going to be zero openings it, for those yeah, players. And bro. that's the thing. But as a Dodgers fan too, like some of our guys are coming as prospects from the, our farm systems, and like Will Smith, Cody Bellinger. Mm-hmm. I understand. Uh, that, but those, how many yeah. years ago that now? Like that how many was, years yeah, been that the was big about leagues? that was like Bellinger's been up there for like six years now, or five, five, six years. And he was like, he was in the farm system, uh, for like a year. Cause he was a prospect for the Dodgers, a high prospect. And, um, like it's, it, I feel like from that Dodgers standpoint, like, yeah, we get, we have Mookie Betts, we have Trey Turner, we, Freddie have, Freddie, Freeman. we have Freddie Freeman, but at the same time, those guys that we got like Max Muncy, we didn't pay for a super high payroll. Like, you know, we just bought, we got him because we thought he was, he was going to be a good, something good source for the Dodgers and what she is. So and that's why when you're at a bigger setting, bigger picture in, in LA like that, guys' minds just switch. Like they they flip. So like if you're playing with the Orioles, and next thing you know, it's like boom, you're going straight to the Dodgers. You're like, man, I get to be in LA. I got a lot more to do than in Baltimore. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So I feel like evidently something's wrong over there in Los Angeles because I mean the best pitcher in baseball, hands down, is Max Scherzer. And if that guy wanted out. That's telling you something straight up right there because Max Scherzer, Mad Max is a guy who wins. He's a guy who competes every single day, day in and day out, whenever he gets the rock, right? He's not going to leave an environment where he's on a winning team, where he feels like this is right. Yeah, I get it. But at the same time, Max Max Scherzer wants the money and some of these guys need money and that's all they're about. The Dodgers got the money. They do, but... If he wanted the Dodgers, Dodgers, he he would have gone to the Dodgers. Dodgers play kind of smart because... Max Scherzer's up there in age, mm-hmm. and why? Why take him? And that's because he's still the best. It's like saying in it's like literally like it's like saying like Buster Posey like why like give him another two more years? But why? He's already had so many great years, and we saw him at the at Fred, the Fresno Grizzly affiliate, like the Triple A. Like we saw him at that time, and getting called up and boom, like seeing him progress through his all throughout his whole career like that just shows Amazing. like it just shows you that you you know just. Anything can happen. It mm-hmm. just anything can happen in the pros. Anything can happen in life. You know, just mm-hmm. anything can happen, and always have that high minded. And that's why some of these pro guys are just they're they're striving to get to that freaking that stage to mm-hmm. be on TV mm-hmm. stuff. So give credit to those guys. That's and that's what something is I'm trying to do as well. Hundred so. percent, bro. Hundred percent. Yes, hey, before we hop on out of here, bro, we're gonna do a little bit of Dodger trivia. Okay, I know you're a hardcore Dodger fan, you know, to the day you die. Literally. Actually, no, after you die, you're taking yeah. that shit out to heaven, huh? Yep. Uh, you're going to rock a hat. hat which, okay, which jersey would you rock in heaven, bro? I mean, all-time player. Come on. Who's your favorite Dodger? If I'm going to be real, all-time favorite Dodger has to be Manny Ramirez. Okay. Manny Ramirez is one of my favorite Dodgers of all time. Just growing up, I remember going to a Dodger game and watching him hit two home runs and they were in the same inning, actually. Same okay. freaking inning. And that just blew my mind. I was a kid. Dad's a big Dodger fan. He was a big uh, Steve Garvey fan, big Kirk Gibson fan. And just, I mean, just why, just growing up watching the Dodgers and especially him just really put everything to my mind as a Dodger. Mm-hmm. And 
that's what made me a Dodger fan. So, 100, bro. Well, hey, that was the first question. Yeah. Wasn't too hard, right? Yeah, not not at all. All time Dodger, all. right there. Okay, question two, right here. Who is your least favorite all time Dodger? Kenley Jansen. Really? I feel like that's a guy that's you know pretty that resourceful dude for the put Dodgers. Me in a freaking a coma, man. Every time he would come in out of the bullpen. Just, oh my God, we didn't know what was going to happen with that dude. We didn't know what was going to happen. Bomb, strikeout. We, we just didn't know. Like, mm-hmm. I just couldn't. And, you, hey, and what was the, who's the, your manager? Skip. Uh, Dave Roberts. And he keeps put. he kept putting kept, him in there. Kept putting him in there. Nope. And it just, it blew my mind. It <laughs> literally blew my mind um, how many times he got in there with some dumb situation. He blew it. And I just couldn't stand him no more. And I'm, I mean, it was it was good that the Dodgers got mm-hmm. got rid of him and went to the Braves. So yeah, no, hundred percent. But question three, man, player that grew on you the most? Wow, um, if I'm gonna be real, um, I really didn't like Max Muncy that much when he first came to the Dodgers. Really, I really didn't like. I mean, he was. I mean, Oakland A's just we we thought he was just gonna be a bus, you know, just some random dude. But look what he's doing for the Dodgers now. Mm-hmm. I, I cannot. Not like the dude. That dude's freaking tearing it up. Tearing it guys, up, bro. man. I mean, sucks we lost him before the playoff season last year, but that man, he just he does some stuff that just blows my mind. Lefty lefty matchup, freaking bombs and mm-hmm. that one home run off Madison Bumgarner that one year. Dude. The looking at him go get the ball. I mean, that just fires me up. That just that's what made him that's what made me grow into it because mm-hmm. I just really didn't like him at first. And after that whole situation mm-hmm. with Matt Bum, that's what really made me like, all right, I cannot dislike this guy no mm-hmm. more. So Okay. Question number four for you. Who's the most overrated Dodger? Overrated. It's a good one. Yeah, that's a tough one for you because, I mean, technically, like... Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't... Okay, I'm not going to say Cody Bellinger. I'm not going to say... I'm not going to say because he's done some stuff for the Dodgers in the past years and can't can't talk bad on him. But if I'm going to be real, most overrated Dodger has to be Tony uh, Gonsolin, the pitcher. And I really don't... I mean... I don't know. He's a good pitcher. Don't get me wrong. I mean, he's a Dodger, but I don't know. He's just overrated. He just doesn't doesn't get the job right. Doesn't get it. Doesn't do the doesn't do the job. Doesn't can't get it done. Gives up home runs. Mm-hmm. Just overrated. He shouldn't be on the Dodgers. Should be uh, should be on a lower marketing team. But same time, he's a Dodger. So okay. gotta like him. Question number five and the final question before we end the podcast: Who is the goat of the Dodgers? Oh, easy. Sandy Koufax. Dude. Sandy Koufax, man. I wish. Best Dodger in America. That man is a legend. Like, I cannot describe that man. I, I've seen some just video on YouTube just, like, looking him up. And the stuff he did, like, just his wind-up, his everything was just funky. And that's what I loved about him. And the amount of stuff he did for the Dodgers, won a few World Series with them, and just – it was awesome. I mean, he's mm-hmm. all time great for them, and that would never change. So, hundred mm-hmm. percent. Yep, bro. Sandy Koufax. That's my that's my that's my guy right there. This isn't part of the Dodger trivia, but I do have one player that I want to ask you your opinions on, Joe Kelly. Oh, that's awesome, uh, Joe Kelly, man. I mean, loved the dude. I mean, loved what he did against the Houston Astros that one year. That was awesome. Looked at Carlos Cray like the like he was just like his kid, big dog. In yeah, him. just like his kid. Yeah. Um, I mean, I like the dude. Uh, sucks we lost him. Uh, but at the same time, man, those Dodgers, I mean, they're just all about money. They're, yeah. they're just all about that money at the same time. And it sucks to lose him. But Joe Kelly, man, that's that's one of the that's one of the guys that some Dodgers will never forget. And some Dodger bro. fans. So. 100%. Bro. Yes, sir. 100%. Well, BK, man, appreciate you coming this was on. Awesome. This is awesome. Man. I appreciate the- you guys um, just, you know, letting me get on this podcast again and Hopefully get on it again after my baseball season, talk about life and talk mm-hmm. about a lot more stuff. So Yeah, dude. No, absolutely, this, bro. This I love just, talking yeah, about this life. This is awesome, man. And especially after my after season, mm-hmm. uh, I lost 50 pounds off the off the fall break. Yeah, and you look coming. great, dude. Thanks, man. You look Appreciate really good. it. You know, what have you been doing? Eating uh, good, going to the gym? Working out, just been hitting the gym a lot better, just eating right. Um, but the main two things was I cut off soda and bread. I, yeah. Those are the two things I cut off. And it's worked for you. It's worked. Obviously. And Drop fifty pounds. I'm, I feel great. So still going, right? Yeah, it gives me gives me a lot. It gives me closer to my next step where I'm at. So hundred percent, dude. Hundred percent. I love it, man. So, and you know, nobody yeah. nobody can want it as much as you can, man. Yeah. So, so that's you it. Do yeah, it for that's, yourself. Literally, that's literally it. And hopefully, you know, the 
episode three with me. We'll come back on and talk about, you know, life and my, you know, what I, what I did to lose this weight and mm -hmm. how mentally it just got me there. So mm -hmm. especially at, and especially with baseball too, mm -hmm. baseball is a, it's a life. It's something that mm -hmm. it's mentally, it's all mental in baseball. So I I love to get back here and talk about it with you guys. And I, I appreciate you, RJ, Luke too. I appreciate you guys. Yeah. Um, you know, this is this is great. Awesome. Yep. Awesome one, bro. Yes, sir. Well, guys, that's going to be episode 43 for you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in every single week. We really appreciate you guys. Like Luke said in the beginning, all the way, if you're watching on YouTube, man, props to you because it's taken me at least five years to get to this milestone. And we finally made it. Could not be more than happy. I'm ready to just keep taking off. You know, like BK said, man, you know, at the beginning, hey, we're doing good things here. And we know that, you know, we're putting in the hard work that, you know, requires to do good things. So, you know, don't expect expect us to go anywhere. We're GBD. We'll see you guys next Tuesday. We're yes, out. Sir, guys being dudes, we out.